we need to dive into the options. And inside the options, the only thing you need to care about in here for this video is of course the video setting tab. For your display, I highly recommend that you use the native resolution of your display to play this game. Having low resolutions actually decrease my FPS, so don't assume it will increase the FPS for satisfactory, like it does in many other games. Nowadays, in general, it's best to play games in full screen, that often gives the best FPS, so do select full screen, which is more stable in general too. Under Graphics API, you'll have DirectX 11, 12 and Vulkan. If you can select DirectX 12, you should really do so, it's the best. Under Max FPS, remember the max frame rate you had inside Windows settings? Well, you should set that to that. So it's 144Hz in my case. If you're having serious FPS problems, you might as well lock it inside of here to 60FPS. It's better to lock it within here than in Windows settings. Now Satisfactory is really nice now. Now we can run something called a hardware benchmark. Click that and it will run a short benchmark and find out which settings should be optimal for you. We'll of course go into all the settings in detail, but this can be a good place to start at, right? So, um, it has selected the graphics preset ultra for us. That's the baseline we will start from. So run the hardware check and select that as your starting point for fiddling around with the settings. If you think everything is just a little bit too high or too low, you can of course decrease or decrease the graphic presets and use that as your starting point instead, if you think that the automated system didn't select the right one for you. Right, inside of here we have texture quality and shadow quality. Shadow quality is pretty taxing for many systems, so I will turn down my shadow quality to medium just to get some extra performance, just because I don't care that much about shadows. Or shadow tracing is best left to default. If you put it on low or near, it might be a little bit weird. You might have broken shadows uh, for the long stuff that is uh, shooting over the screen, long shadows. If you put it to cinematic, you might have a very unintentional FPS drop for a very minor detail. Most processing looks amazing, but doesn't take so much performance for most systems. I would recommend to leave this at the suggested value from your benchmark. Anti-aliasing makes so that vertical lines and stuff doesn't look jagged. I personally don't think this is very annoying. I will take a little bit of a performance boost and just lower this to medium instead of ultra. The foliage load distance is mainly the vegetation. Far is usually far enough, but if you don't want foliage to disappear in the horizon, select very far. I highly recommend you to not use cinematic unless you're taking screenshots. If you're having some stutter issues, I would however turn the foliage low distance down to near. But that's only if you're having stutters. The VFX quality, of course it has some performance drop while you have this on Ultra, but if you have this very low, the game will look a little bit dated, to be honest. Foliage quality, that's the vegetation, it's on Ultra for me. If you're having stutters or kind of low FPS even after going through the recommended settings, I would actually turn down this to low. Uh, for me, it has been one of the most important settings to mitigate stutters on my previous systems. So have this on low if you're having stutters or really bad FPS. But Ultra works fine for this system. Light quality decides how many light sources can be rendered on screen at once. I'll leave it at Ultra, but honestly I didn't see much difference between high, so I might turn it high later on. The view distance is one of those things that affects the performance the most. If you're having problems, I highly recommend you to turn view distance to medium or near, but the game will look a little bit wonky, and one thing that's quite important for me personally when I play open world games is that the view distance is far. And since this is the uh, suggested value for me, I will keep it at Ultra. Now cloud quality is a weird one. For some people, this is a huge FPS boost if you turn the clouds off completely. But for me, I didn't see much of a difference, so I will keep them at Ultra. But if you're having issues, I recommend just turning off clouds, to be honest. Motion blur is an annoying effect that smears your screen. It also steals FPS, 
I wouldn't recommend anyone to use motion blur unless it's a personal preference. The conveyor visual quality decides the accuracy on items on the conveyor belts. It costs a little bit of CPU, so even if you have a really powerful system, it can be a good idea to have it on high, just so that you don't get minor lags when you're having a super big base with too many conveyor belts. If you're having a weak CPU and kind of not too good RAM, if you have very little RAM, I turn this to low. And you should significantly lag less when you're hanging out in your mega base with too many conveyor belts. Here under advanced settings, we have upscaling method. Do you remember that I told you to remember if you have AMD or Nvidia? So in general, if you have AMD, you'll need to set it here. If you have Nvidia, you'll need to set it here. This should, however, be set automatically. If you can use the upscaling method, it will increase the performance for most users. However, if you do not or cannot use upscaling, you turn this to none. Then you will select the anti-aliasing method. And inside of here, we have fast temporal and temporal super resolution. For most people, temporal AA is absolutely the lowest performance impacting and most stable one. So in general, if you don't use upscaling method, Temporal AA, TAA should be selected. But I will go with NVIDIA DLSS upscaling. Here we have something that is a really smart and easy to use, that is upscaling presets. And this can be a really big performance impact for many systems. You can of course use no downscaling, but that defeats the purpose of even using this. If you care a lot about the visual quality and screenshot ability of your game, the upscaling preset should be set to quality. If you're somewhere in between, you should go for balanced. And if you want maximum FPS and performance, you should definitely go with performance mode, which I'm going to do. You can manually set screen percentage, but the presets are pretty well set up. The conveyor belt item frequency is basically lets you cap how many things are shown on the conveyor belts. So you can cap this at 30 or 60 FPS and this can be super helpful if you are having really severe laggy issues, if you're building a mega base and are having like hundreds of conveyor belts in view at one time and you're seeing them and when you're seeing them it lags. Then I should cap this to 30. Conveyor belt render distance, well it can be really useful to see what is on conveyor belts far away, but far is good enough for most people. If you're having issues again when you're looking at many conveyor belts, you should set this to near instead. Gamma is just personal preference, it doesn't affect performance. V-Sync means vertical sync, that disables screen tearing that you might see when you're playing games and the screen kind of sections off vertically and it's really annoying. If you have that issue and it's really annoying, you'll need to check this. However, it's also having a pretty heavy performance impact so if it doesn't disturb you or it's nothing that you really see, this should be kept unchecked. Hierarchical seed buffer occlusion sounds a lot like game developer language, but in any case, for basically all GPUs, this should increase the FPS when you are building your factories properly and walling them in so that you don't see them all the time. So this should be checked in most cases. If it's not right for you, well, uncheck it and see if your FPS changes, but in general, this should increase the FPS for basically any modern graphics card. And when I mean modern, I mean basically most GPUs, to be honest. In the far distance, when you're looking at stuff, the game is showing you a lower quality model of the thing you're looking at, so that your FPS won't be totally sad. This setting makes it so that the transition between the low quality model and the high quality model is smooth, but it also causes FPS drops. However, if you're turning this off, when you're going closer to a model in the distance, the high quality one will just pop into existence, it will just be instantly re replaced and you will kind of notice that the model is changing to a high quality one. If you enable the load dead ring, you won't notice that transition. So if that doesn't annoy you, you can turn this off and you will, well, have a little bit better performance. Most people should probably have this on, however, because you will notice when the model is transforming from a low quality to a high quality one. 
or many people do if you don't turn it off. Contact shadows are very good looking shadows that you can turn off. Uh, if you don't care that much about shadows, you will get a performance increase by turning this off. It might not be huge, so you can test it. Global elimination is a little bit of a different setting altogether. So we are actually going to save this for later because I want to show you in game. These are just a uh, field of view that's up to preference. Right, click apply and confirm. Now you can jump into your game. All right, here we have the good old base. So what I wanted to show you, we need to go inside for that. So we're just going to creep inside this little factory here. And you can see it's pretty lit up and nice, probably as you're used to playing satisfactory. To showcase the global illumination, we'll need to change some settings that we set. So you can see this little white line here in the door, and you can see the medium quality shadows there. Well, it doesn't quite go really well with this setting, so we're going to turn the shadow quality to ultra, and I'm going to enable contact shadows. Right, so now it looks like this, and you can see this little weird light here uh, under the door is now gone. So, now you can see it's very well lit and nice in here as we are used to play Satisfactory. But if we go to Options and Video, and go down here to the Global Illumination, if we set this to Medium, we can then click Apply and Confirm. And now, you can see that the game is totally different. Now. We are not having a lit interior, no, the light isn't really coming through here. But because we're having a roof and we're not having an interior light, we're getting this very beautiful little light effects going on here. Hmm. Strange. It is also not completely officially supported by the game, so we have some weird stuff happening from time to time. And that's normal. Uh, the recommended way to play Satisfactory is actually with this setting off right now. Uh, that probably changes in the future, so when you're watching this, it might not uh, be true anymore. Just turn it on if you have the graphics capability of doing so. See what you think about it and uh, select for yourself. Now, we have some extra options here. We can have this arrow here, so we can expand it, so we can have lightning mood. We can set this to high. And this is now moody bright, looks great. We can also set it to dark. If you set this to high and dark, by the way, factories with no windows will completely almost feel or look pitch black. So keep that in mind. We can even set it to bright if you want a little bit more of a vanilla game feeling, but still having a really nice graphical effect that they can come with. And this has been referred to as Lumen before, if anyone wonders that. I'd probably set this to Moody Bright and Medium. Yeah, I guess we're gonna have it like that for a while. You can see that when we're walking around in the world with this turned on, dark areas will appear darker and light areas will appear lighter. We are getting a little bit more life contrast and variation in the world, so, which is nice. So here you can see, having the coal mines here and having almost no windows makes a pretty dark, dingy little environment, which is beautiful. Right, now you have a really good reason of using interior lights all over the place where you want stuff to look really cool. I really hope this was useful for you. If it was, please leave a like. I hope we will enjoy some satisfactory gameplay together. We're probably going to stream some satisfactory too, so check in our uh, Twitch channel as well. In any case, uh, if this was useful, do leave a like, and I will now continue our Let's Play series of satisfactory, so I can show you in detail how to basically do anything in the game, step by step, for beginners. Very beginner friendly. In any case, thanks a lot for watching. This is your host, Eric, signing out.